Hello, everyone. Um, thank you again for joining us today for our webinar. My name is Pauline White, and before I hand it over to our moderator, Brian Shaner, I will just take a moment to go through some logistics of our webinar. First, we will be recording the call and sharing the on-demand replay for you to share with your colleagues. At the end of the session, we will have a Q&A, so please feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A pod. Please do not use the chat pod. The reason for this is that we can compile the information in one central location. Upon entry to the call, everyone is muted, but if you have a question that is too complex for the Q&A pod, feel free to raise your hand and we will unmute your line and you will be able to ask your question live. We certainly want to hear from you. I believe we are ready to get started. Brian, over to you. Great, thanks Pauline. Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Uh, so today we got an interesting topic. So we are joined by Eric Eckwurzel. He is our the CTO of Government Solutions here at Dun & Bradstreet and Rocco Pieri. He's a research director for our investigative services uh, here as well. And the topic today is really talking about these the challenges of collaboration amongst agencies during an investigation. So one of the things that, uh, you know, Rocco has joined uh, the company, actually he, he started like a whole week before me. So I started June 8th and I think he started June 1st. So he, he's got me by a week, he's, he's our veteran here for this. And uh, it's been great to get to know Rocco and, and hear about the challenges uh, in, in how we're moving forward with our investigative solutions. And this, this concept of collaboration being a big challenge uh, is continuing to be brought up and, and why that's such a challenge for the different agencies to deal with. Um, and so what we want to do before we get started is we have a few poll questions that I'm going to ask uh, Pauline to uh, go ahead and kick up. What this is really going to do is just give us some framework of uh, background on, on some of the team that we've got or the attendees that we have today. So if you guys can answer that, that'll just help us kind of tailor the conversation to better meet your needs and, and maybe address some of the questions you guys are going to have with us. Okay, that's the first one, and then there we go. Great, well, that's good insights. And then Pauline, I think we have another one too, correct? We sure do. Okay. Okay, great. Wow, that's a lot of you guys need to collaborate. That, that's a, that's not a surprise. All right, and then the last one there, Pauline. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, all right, great, great insights. All right, uh, thank you so much for that. Again, that really helps us kind of understand our audience a little better, understands kind of how we want to go ahead and approach this and tailor the conversation again. Uh, you know, Rocco, like, like I said, you know, you and I joined pretty much at the same time. And, and so it's been great to talk to you and learn about the, you know, the, your, your background and, and where you're coming from and everything. Uh, and again, you know, collaboration is the term that keeps coming up and everything. And, you know, ultimately, the question for you is, is what are the challenges, you know, collaboration and others? that uh, you know, face these agencies out there uh, with successfully completing investigations today? Thank you, Brian. That's an interesting question, and it's a timely question. 
when we talk about collaboration among law enforcement agencies, whether it's state, local, federal, inspector generals, regulatory agencies, the, the key driver to these challenges is investigations are getting more complex each day, whether it's technology, the sophistication of, of the technology, sophistication of the criminals, and the overall changes in society. So it comes down to two big stressors that really drive that, that challenge is all organizations, agencies, and departments are faced with competing requirements. And this is budgetary, this is personnel, this is manpower, this is all fiscal based. And cross that into, there is a need for access to actionable intelligence that your individual organization may or may not have deliberate access to. So there is a need and necessity to work in a joint operating environment with other agencies to, that sometimes cross state and legal lines. And those are the main challenges, is that, that timely and relevant access to actionable intelligence, and you have to manage those competing requirements to meet your objectives. Okay, so so that's great. So Rocco, as you think about that, you know, like what are the things like as you were in the field, what do you, what would have helped you? Like what would have been a really great thing to have? When it comes to collaboration and like like we just discussed, that there is a need for it. And as organizations really try to manage their budget and resources, you, you can't participate in every task force. You can't physically participate in every joint investigation, but you, you, need to part, you need to be involved and reap the benefits of those associations and those relationships. So if I had an, like a, an environment where I had my analysts, my auditors, my investigators working collaboratively with other agencies and other units within my own department, my own agency, where they could go and share their intelligence, their actionable intelligence, their raw intelligence, their analysis, and they don't have to physically sit together. They don't have to physically get in their vehicle and drive to another agency's location. And they could have this communication and collaboration and build investigations and build their audits and build their, their processes to get to better investigative outcomes. That would really help uh, agencies like I said, when I was in the field, it would really help me manage how I, I manage my resources and get to better investigative outcomes. Oh, that's, no, that's good. That's good. So I know, um, you know, it's interesting we talk about that. I know when we got here, Eric, you had already been working on a product that we just launched uh, last month called DMB Investigate. Uh, and I know it actually solves a lot of this. And kind of as I hear Rocco talk, it sounds like it's this in a central repository where, you know, I can, I can do a piece of the investigation. Rocco can do his piece. You can do your piece. And, and then together, whoever's take, whoever's got lead or whoever's participating can look at all those notes together in a sense. Uh, could you give us a little background on, on DMB investigate what, what challenges you were seeing in the market and in the vision of what it's supposed to deliver, not only today, uh, because I know there's a bunch of iterations and a bunch of, you know, additional feature functions coming, where we're hoping to take the market uh, in the future for this. Sure, Brian, be glad to. Um, so when we, when we set out and looked at what we wanted to build for DMB Investigate, we wanted to achieve really three, three, three main things. Uh, the one that you've talked about is collaboration. So we wanted to make it possible for uh, individuals and investigators and analysts, both at agencies and in the field, to be essentially a button click away from sharing whatever insights they've found with other agencies or other individuals within agencies. So the types of tools inside of the product give you as the individual, the user, complete control over who you want to share with. You, you, you essentially say, I want to share this piece of information that I've learned that's important for this investigation with the analyst who's in my agency or I wanna share it with the person in the field, or I wanna share it with another analyst in another agency who might be on the same task force, who or who I know that other agency is working on that particular investigation. So you're just a push button away from sharing the, the information and deciding exactly what you wanna share and how much you wanna share. Um, the, that, that is what we're hoping helps people to collaborate more efficient, 
efficiently across government, quite, quite frankly. The second is, is um, to gain a lot of access to Dun & Bradstreet's vast cloud of business information. So we wanted to make it easy for you to search through our database and add into your investigation the information that you may be able to find in our databases that may or may not be available to you in your databases. Um, and, and the third is, is to make it possible for you to, to reach out to our research analysts who have access to a lot of data that stays inside of Dun & Bradstreet's databases and never leaves our databases, but can be useful for investigations. So that's actually the team that Rocco uh, manages. They're analysts and certified fraud examinators and former investigators from government who have access to a lot of data that Dun & Bradstreet holds that never leaves our, our firewalls, quite frankly. So those were the three things we were looking to achieve with, with the Investigate product, Brian. Okay, great, great. Yeah, so Rocco, I know, again, we talked about the collaboration. So Eric mentioned a couple of different things there as far as access to data. You know, can you talk a little more about that, the kind of the, the importance of having access to data sources external uh, during an investigation, why that's so important and critical? Yes. With with any investigation or any audit, you're you're always looking beyond your own databases because your databases are have their limitations and they have their specific requirements and specific uses. So when you're conducting complex investigations, and as we said earlier, the the simple investigations from 20 years ago, through technology, everything from Bitcoin to the internet, are now becoming more and more complex. So agencies and departments really need the tools to gather that business intelligence, that, that raw intelligence and balance it against and incorporate it into their own intelligence and their own investigative findings that they conduct through street level findings, everything from surveillance to witness interviews to collaboration with other agencies and being able to, to have access to that really will enhance the investigations. And the bottom line is to just get better investigative outcomes that are more successful that really show the stakeholders of any agency or department that the value added of, of their investigative work. Okay. And, uh, you know, for the attendees here, you know, we, we've got, uh, you know, lots of time today. We're, we're, we're going to only use up what we need to, but if you have questions, please go ahead and put those in here. Um, I'm gonna, I got another question for Rocco here. Uh, he's going to walk us through, can you, you know, as this new product comes out, DMB investigate, how does that potentially change what an investigation looks like in the future? So Rocco is going to walk us through that here in a second. Um, but if you have any questions, even, you know, uh, a little off topic or whatever, you know, Rocco's got a lot of, a lot of experience in the field for sure. Uh, you know, he answers a lot of questions for me and, and kind of gets me up to speed. Uh, happy to take those and uh, we can address those. You got Eric as well. who can talk about the technology or the data aspect of it. So let us know what your questions are. Uh, but yeah, Rocco, like I said, you know, no, now that you've gotten here to DMB and, and you kind of bring your experience from the field and you know what DMB is capable of uh, and where we're going with it, how, do, how does that change what an investigation might look like? So if I'm, if I'm an agent uh, you know, in the field or I'm an analyst back in the office, what, is, what can my new life look like with, with this new platform and, and its capabilities that it's going to bring? Thanks. Yeah, I think uh, right up front, what it brings is that central, central repository of, of intelligence and analysis. So if you have your analysts working in, in your headquarters element, analysts working back at your field office, and you have your investigators out gathering raw intelligence in the field through all their tools and techniques, and then they're incorporating that data into what Dun & Bradstreet brings through their, their data, I, I think that collaboration and that environment really takes away a lot of the investigators and analysts time from gathering and curating it themselves. So that there is that jump start there, which would be really helpful because you really want your investigators, analysts and auditors focusing on their core duties and responsibilities and not so much on gathering and curating and putting together the raw findings where this tool and this this environment in DNB Investigate really helps. And from a from a budget aspect, if you if you tether budget back to legal aspects, since post 9/11, all agencies are driven to work jointly with other agencies across jurisdictions, and it makes sense. 
but it's also driven by you know the public and by the lawmakers. So if I have yet another tool to help me manage my workforce, and that's for leaders, leaders managing a workforce, if I have an extra tool that can help me do that, now my investigators and my analysts working for me, this gives them another tool to manage their daily investigations and operations. So I think looking back, that, that is what uh, a key aspect of what this brings. Okay, great. Um, I think you know some of the other stuff that we've talked about is you know just the uh, you know, concepts of how are we you know how do we combine the data? How do people you know kind of solve uh, create that kind of completed investigative uh, you know research so they can take that and, and go be uh, successful with their their case and everything? Do you think that these uh, tools are allowing um, you know can you walk me through what I might do a little bit differently? So. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what a good example might be. Maybe it's uh, somebody's doing some money laundering or whatever, and I need to do some outreach. How do I access that data that Eric was talking about, and, and how would I approach that? Is that something that you know DMV is able to to give me good intelligence out of the gate? Do I how do I work with them? How do we how do they work with us? That's a good question. I I, I think access to the data cloud and access to the investigative research services team as a service gives you that added force multiplier to, to your daily operations at your department or agency. I, I, Cause like I said earlier, investigations are more and more complex. And so many investigations now are crossing state lines, crossing national lines. They're tethered back to a, a various numerous laws and, and procedures. So gathering that data that I know is trusted and curated and is, a live data, it's, it's actionable intelligence that can only enhance what, what my investigators, my auditors, my analysts are already gathering on their own through their own daily course of operations. So that's, that's a key value added. Okay, great. No, that's, that's, that's really helpful. Uh, again, if anybody uh, has any questions, if you guys can just drop those in the, in the questions, uh, we'll get to them. Um, and uh, talk about it that way as well. Uh, Eric, so one of the things I know that, you know, uh, DMB Investigate is you know, just kind of rolling out the door and we've got some iterations. What are some of the upcoming feature functions that you, you'd want to highlight to the audience today? Sure. So, you know, from a, from a content perspective, you know, so at, at the end of the day, you also want to make sure that this product we want to make sure that this product gives you access to Dun & Bradstreet's data. There are, there's uh, data that Dun & Bradstreet's making available that uh, wasn't available before. Um, some of the most interesting data available has to do with what we are, we are defining as shipping insights data. So when you want to look at uh, what businesses are shipping to what businesses, uh, what cargo they're shipping, and what are the contents of those shipments? That's data that's, that we're making available through the product. There's also violative data, government violative data, which is important. Um, uh, and and uh, we're also looking at some individual data, uh, web activity data for individuals, as well as one of the new data sets we're putting into it is what's called people to done. So if you're looking at one individual, what are the other businesses that that particular individual also owns or may own so that you can look at other businesses that that individual is involved with. Um, then if you look at features and functionality, you know, it's completely up to you, by the way, if you want to share something with another, another person, you can go into the product, pull out information, bring it down into your IT or your Palantir or some other organizing tool and then organize it in that environment. What we're looking to do is that you may come across data that you feel is very important to one of your account, one of your uh, fellow analysts or investigators in another agency, and you're literally a, a button click away from sharing that information with them. It's not information that they have to rebuy from Dun & Bradstreet. You're essentially saying, I've purchased this information from Dun & Bradstreet. It's useful to the investigation. I want to share it with the following 10 people. And so you make that available to them. Um, so rather than having it be downloaded into your system and you might have figured out how to use, maybe you can't use email, maybe you have to get it across. 
information, which is something is on you, of course, to make sure you're authorized to share that information. The tool will allow you to efficiently do that. Um, we're also adding to the application an investigation board. So this is a little like I2 or Palantir. But the difference between this and I2 and Palantir, Brian, is that with I2 and Palantir, you load each and every element into the application, and then you draw the connections between the individuals, the businesses, the events, uh, the money transfers, and so forth, and you build that case out yourself. In the case of, if you do the same exercise inside of DMB Investigate, when you add a business or an individual or an event, then we have calls back to our vast cloud of data and we bring back to you suggested connections that you may or may not have known about. The first connections we'll look for is connections to other entities that are already in your investigation board. You know, other businesses or individuals that are already there. So when you add an individual or business to it, you'll see lot suggested lines from Dun & Bradstreet to other entities in that investigation board. The second level is suggested additional entities that you may not have noticed or thought about that ought to be added to the investigation board so that you can reject any of those, of course, because you manage and control the investigation, or you can accept further ones for further investigation. And if you want to, you can, you can call on Rocco's team to, to, uh, to uh, look, do some research and, and add to that process as well by looking at Dun & Bradstreet data. So that's coming down. Um, we're adding an incognito feature, which allows you to go into the product, pull information, look at information, and then when that session ends, Brian, everything you did in the product literally disappears. So it's kind of a zero footprint research event where you go into the data, get your data and leave. For some of the people who are using the product who need to be a lot more careful about a footprint and, and so forth. Um, uh, those th that probably are the big, big ones, Brian, that are coming up in the next, next uh, three, three to four months. Okay, well, that's great. No, I appreciate that. Uh, so we have another question here, uh, Eric, I think this is for you. Uh, does DMB Investigate have the ability to use or have the added value of computer learning to bridge the gap of different types of data sets used by the various agencies and or deal with the different terminologies or definitions used by various federal agencies? Yeah, you know, um, uh, Rocco and I spoke at length about this because we were trying to, for, exa for example, determine what should be the uh, way to organize groups of entities. Um, do you call it a group? Do you call it a portfolio? Do you call it a, 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 a some, so we came up with a neutral one, which was briefcase. We felt that it didn't really impinge on any others. The product is actually multilingual. So, you know, it, it auto translates briefcase into French if you happen to be working with a, you know, a French investigation team when they open up the screen. Um, so in terms of building out a lexicon that, that, that where depending on what part of the organization you're in, we haven't uh, built that out, but it's a really great idea. I appreciate your bringing that up actually as one of the original questions because it's, it's an area that we'd like to explore, but we haven't done that yet. Yeah, I think that's one of the interesting things that I, I've seen about this is we're kind of bringing this to market looking for those insights from the marketplace and talking about, you know, like what are the needs of that market and what else can we deliver? So, um, you know, I think th those are, that's, that is definitely a great one there. Uh, I think the, uh, the other thing Rocco was, I was thinking about listening to Eric talking about those feature functions and everything. I know that it sounds almost like we've got some sort of kind of AI capability that's doing the suggestive piece. How does that change what, what you're doing? I mean, is that, like you said, I think it kind of speaks to more of that getting those people on the street more so than, than sitting behind the desk. But uh, how would that have helped you, you know, thinking back, you know, how you used to handle your investigations in the past? Yeah, that would be very helpful when you look at the data and how the data gets linked and, the, you know, when you're finding anomalies and tips and indicators and in linkage information, like I said, with the complexity of, inform of information and investigations, for example, if I'm working locally and I'm working narcotics, I'm working fraud, um, I'm working gang activity, this data, the linkage and uh, the connect connectivity of this data can lead you into, you work in a simple narcotics case and now you have a 
a transnational case or a case that crosses state lines. And then it could also, these insights and analysis can lead you into higher level money laundering, human trafficking. So that's that piece that, you know, it's more and more legwork would have been done on the street. And now with all access to all this data and the linkages and connections to this data, feeding that back to the analysts and the investigators, they're gonna develop a lot of those leads that really you didn't have the manpower, the resources or the time to develop. So, so it sounds like kind of two things, right? Like you're gonna be able to get to those kind of, you know, uh, possible areas that you need to investigate much quicker. But also it sounds, what, what I thought was intriguing about what you said is that, okay, you thought you had something maybe localized to you that, that you need to care for, but all of a sudden now you're crossing state lines oh, wait, I need to bring in this other agency or this other department. I guess what now, I mean, in, you know, with investigate, I know we can just like add them to my briefcase and now they can all of a sudden just kind of join into the investigation midway and then kind of catch up them, you know, get themselves caught up, brought up to speed real quick, right? It's not like, let me send you case files or any of that kind of stuff. Is, am, am I on the right track there? Yeah, Brian, that, that's, that's exactly it. Uh, any investigator, detective, special agent, you know, analyst, they're gonna reach out to that counterpart organization and they're gonna you know, have a conference call, they're gonna have a, a video teleconference or a secured call, and they're gonna give them a quick background of what they're investigating. But then with, with this tool in this environment, they give them access to DMB Investigate, and now they could jump right in and see all the, the analysis that was conducted that's, that lives in that briefcase real time. Instead of you know, me emailing stuff to them or me packaging up and registered mailing them stuff uh, or having multiple VTCs, it, it really can streamline your time. And that gets back to the manpower and resource uh, limitations that all agencies and department are facing today and that are only getting worse with the impact of COVID and uh, diminishing budgets. I no longer have to take one of my people and put them on a plane and fly them out to sit on a task force or to put them on a plane and go back and forth or put them in their car to drive back and forth. This is yet another tool that can really help me manage my entire lifespan of my investigation from the analysis investigation right through the prosecution and satisfying our stakeholders. Okay, great. Um, you know, Eric, I think one of the other things is, is I know a lot of, you know, the data aspect of it, you know, we, we talk about kind of the different types of data that we have and, you know, there's that kind of publicly available, et cetera. You know, I think what people are accessing as far as working with their investigations, not all the data sources they have access to are equal. And we've talked about that and maybe our competitors, yeah, maybe a little, little shameless plug for us, but, you know, can you talk a little bit about the data differences that what we, what we're bringing to the table that other people might not have? Sure. So, you know, one of the things we, when we talk to, um, talk to agencies and have conversations with agencies. We, we often say, look, uh, it's not that Rocco's team um, has better investigators because they don't, they're good investigators. There's, there's good investigators in the private sector and good investigators in the public sector. Um, it's just that we can't see what you can see because you have access to systems with data that we have no access to. And also, you can't see what we can see. So we have access to data and systems that aren't necessarily available to you. So it's not um, the stuff that we can see that you can't see where we, we're, we're looking to give you visibility into that through Investigate and through Rocco's team. These are, um, when you look at our data, there's data that we make available that we sell through either resellers or we sell to our customers. There's data that we never that never leaves our firewalls that is available to Rocco's team. And this has to do with um, uh, connections between businesses because they conduct they conduct business with one another through accounts receivable. So over you know two billion lines of essentially who who is on who is buying from who uh, on from 45 countries over 16,000 businesses that provide this type of data to us we contractually are obligated to protect that data and we never reveal that data, but it does help us with tipping and queuing. So that's a very valuable asset. And, and so if you look at the data we have, we have, um, we have the data that's, that's publicly available that we resource. We have the data that we make available through that we curate and sell. And then we have a vast, much bigger amount of data that never leaves our firewalls. 
And we're looking to help investigators gain access to that through, through work with Rocco Pieri's team primarily and some of our data scientists and some of the scores and indicators that we're putting into this product, DMV Investigate, Brian. Okay, great. All right, well, thank you. Um, you know, real quick, uh, thanks. So for everybody joined, uh, Pauline, I think we have just uh, some like follow-up uh, polls that we wanna ask just about if was this helpful or not. Would really welcome your feedback on what topics you'd like us to talk about next. Uh, in, in this space and you know if we miss the mark let us know so that we can adjust that and make this time you know we don't want to waste people's time so how do we make this more valuable for you um, you know but I, I know one of the things Rocco that we wanted to offer uh, the attendees today was you know that if, if they want to kind of see what DMB can do uh, that we're going to offer a free investigation on a target of interest uh, for them talk a little bit more about that offer please sure Brian yeah, anyone who's on the call today who, who wants to discuss further, uh, have a more deeper conversation related to their individual and unique agency or department, uh, I'd gladly be available to do that. And we can take a, and a target of your interest and I can have my team do their deep analysis, do their deep dive research and present you the findings to give you a feel for what comes out of the investigative research services through the, the collaboration with my team, DNB Investigate, the Data Cloud, and your team and your your investigative process. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really helpful. And and Rocco, thanks for doing that. I know that's not like a yeah, that takes you guys a good a good amount of time to do that. So if anybody's interested in taking advantage of that, uh, please just drop your name and email uh, in, you know, in the chat or pop it up in the questions and we'll make sure we get that. Uh,